my husband and I had been convinced that we were the home to house a, a dear, dear person in our life while he waited his um, sentencing to go into prison. And that changed a lot of things in our household. Nothing was the same um, for that time period in order to keep uh, abreast of the law. But we watched him grow in his faith during that time, which was wonderful. That's this all the setup. This before he went into prison. Yes. He, they had two months that they could spend, the husband and wife could spend together before he went into prison. And he's still serving a couple more years there. But during that time period, uh, when fall came, my husband is out bow hunting real often and As I was in bow and arrow bow and arrow hunting mm -hmm. for deer and we um, we were I was preparing a lovely meal for when he came in from hunting usually it's a little bit later because they hunt almost till dark and as we as I was preparing the meal I went to fold a load of clothes or I thought maybe a towel or two and in that period of time the kitchen caught on fire the oil that was on the stove caught on fire and the cupboards are in flames and it was a disaster we called the um, local fire department which they all showed up in my tiny little kitchen in their full regalia and we're most of the guys I had had in children's church at one time or another and now they were grown up and serving us by by making Putting sure the fire was fire. out yep making sure that that was out and um now was your husband out hunting when this he was happened? out hunting when it happened so we threw open all the windows to try to get some of the smoke out because smoke and soot and the the dust from the fire extinguisher went everywhere in our old farmhouse two-story farmhouse so the fire department assured us it was fine. They asked, do you want me to take the stove outside? Because you're not going to be using it anymore because it had melted among with, along with a lot of other things. And that's the scene when we had the windows open and we realized that my husband hadn't come in as he usually would. After hunting. After hunting. And with the windows open, we heard three pistol shots. That is the international distress signal for a hunter in trouble. <laughs> which I knew because we watch all those shows on television. And um, so we, there was such a concern for him. Eventually, we had to call the fire department back then an hour after they were there for the house, the kitchen fire, to come back and rescue my husband who'd fallen out of his tree stand and broke his back and his femur and was in such miserable shape. So. That's just the beginning. To tell the whole story takes 40 PowerPoint slides. Oh, but the yeah. house was a wreck. We were going through remediation with that. He was in the hospital. He had surgery, came home from the hospital, and there was only one room that had been cleaned up enough for him to stay in while he recuperated. I had book deadlines. Uh, two weeks after he got home from the hospital, I got this horrible pain in my back that I didn't know what it was. So my daughter came out to take me to the ER while my son took his kids over to her house so he could come out and care for his father while he was laying there. And a few days later, I had gallbladder surgery, a day off, and then right back to full-time caregiving. Full caregiving. And that wasn't and even the end. you still had the house guest who was getting ready to go to prison. That's true. Like, that sounds like a novel or a soap Doesn't or something. Doesn't it? Except no editor would believe it. And it went on and on and on. And identity theft remediation at the same time. And just, it, it was one of those Job moments that sometimes we get where while one messenger is speaking, here comes yet another. We could find reason to celebrate. When did that happen? Did I write that? <laughs> yeah, but first you said, first you said my heart was losing its grip mm -hmm. on the difference Christmas can make. True. How did you wrestle with why, first of all? There'd be a little why coming out of this, wouldn't there? Some of it we knew was just circumstantial. Some of it, some of it we look back now and say we can see God's hand in it all over it. But there was an awful lot of the, the process of it that was just plain hard, like a lot of people find as they're approaching Christmas. They're missing someone who's no longer at, going to be at the table, or they're, they're dealing with financial crises, or any number of things, a, a diagnosis that's really tough. But 
But in the middle of all of that process, we found that if we kept watching for the humor in some of this disaster upon disaster upon disaster, and as we kept leaning into the Lord because he was the only trustworthy person to lean on, and as we just did one thing after another and watched him restore life again to the house, to the kitchen, to Bill's body, to my body, and our relationship grew, could grow in the middle of that, not because that's natural, but because that's that's what it's like when we just lay it before the Lord and say, we cannot do this, but we know that you can. We had grandchildren that came in and put up a Christmas tree for us. They bought the tree and decorated it all for us and uh, others who ministered to us in really sweet ways. So the human factor was big too. It's neat that Bill is here today. Right. I'm glad you could come together and we see the wholeness. We right. see that God has put this back together, but you know, typically, and I've had people right here in this chair who've had that crucible, not one issue, right. but the avalanche of problems and crises and unexpected trials. Most say they lost their faith in the midst of that. Sometimes that's a temporary human emotion that we go through because we can't imagine how God would allow such a thing to happen and especially all at once or uh, we've been watching even within my own circle of acquaintances in these last days there are people who there's a woman who wasn't able to serve with Operation Christmas Child this year where they box up the boxes to send to mm -hmm. the needy children and it had been a tradition for years and years and years with her family but she had a chemo appointment that day and had to forego that tradition in their family there are others who have uh, had a family member who's passed on to glory right now between Thanksgiving and Christmas and that additional heartache that comes with that everybody's got something as they say you have a great phrase because of Jesus I can say I can't unravel I'm, I'm hemmed, hemmed in, in hope. hope that's right it's beautiful. That's right. And sometimes we have to be, um, no matter how strong our faith is, we have to be reminded of that, that he, Jesus came because of situations like that, because we cannot function without him, because we need someone to lean on and because we need a savior. So where Christmas can seem like a, an affront to some people, when the joy and the presence and the light and the life that's why, that's exactly why he came. I took this from your personal story and it's, it's Psalm 71 verse three and five in the Amplified Bible. Be to me a rock of refuge in which to dwell and a sheltering stronghold to which I may continually resort. Mm -hmm. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust and the source of my confidence. I can't help but wonder if your brand new novel Restoring Christmas um, seized a little bit of all that you have been through. Um, you could have made, made a lot up, but when you've been through so much yourself, you just draw from those emotions that you remember. You draw from watching people around you who are going through tough things. I, and I learned early on that I wasn't going to be a very good writer if I wasn't listening to people and their needs. And then listening, of course, to God too, and where people's stories intersect with his story. And that's where we'll find our hope. Mm. Quick, quick synopsis of um, this, speaking of TV and restorations of things that right. need help. I'm a big fan, like a lot of people are, of the kind of restoration shows that we see on television, the do-it-yourself shows where they take a house that looks like it's completely falling apart, the ceiling's fallen in, the foundation is rocky, and then these wonderful, talented designers come in and they break down a wall and they, they redo the floors and they put paint on and they fix what was broken. And it's a completely, it's a before and after picture. And our lives are so much like that. We are the before picture. Then Jesus comes in and, and realizes that wall's gonna have to go because I need you to have a clear sight line from where you are to where I am. They, he comes in and smooths the rough edges. He takes the, the time to do that. So in this book, when I was, I got the title actually before just about anything else, Restoring Christmas, and came to realize that Christmas and restoration are so synonymous. God even said in his word, God himself will restore us. Mm. God will restore us. And one of the ways he did that was by sending his son.